An essential component of a comprehensive web application security assessment is the discovery of parameters that might not be known to us. There are many names for this uh, testing technique, parameter discovery, parameter enumeration, parameter fuzzing, parameter brute forcing. Essentially what we're trying to do is send a list of parameters to our application and try and see if it's processing any of them and from there, try to identify whether there might be a vulnerability associated with that parameter that we have now identified by discovering a parameter that otherwise wasn't exposed on the client side. There are many, many tools available to do parameter fuzzing. One of the ones that I quite like because it integrates quite well uh, into Burp and it works quite well is Paraminer, which is conveniently available as an extension within Burp's BAP store. And as you can see here, I already have it installed. So it's quite easy to work with. We click on the repeater tab here because that's where I'm going to launch it. Really, you can click in any request and response. And I'm gonna right click in this request, go to extensions, go to Paraminer. And what I like to do, um, there are many features of this tool that I'm not going to talk about in this video. I'm gonna focus on the traditional parameter guessing. And it gives us a number of options here. We can guess get parameters, cookie parameters, so you know cookie names. HTTP header, headers, and because this specific request is of the content type JSON, application slash JSON, we get the option uh, guess JSON parameters. Uh, if it had normal kind of traditional HTTP formatted body parameters, it would give us a, dish, a different option to guess body parameters. In this case, it's smart enough to recognize that it's JSON, so it knows how to format the JSON. Uh, and actually, I'm gonna just conveniently click guess everything. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna give us a series of prompts uh, to select the options for each of these different test cases. Um, so here are the prompts here. Uh, this is the attack configuration. There are a large number of options that are available and not all of these are actually even documented. <laughs> There's actually another project, which I will link in the description of this video, which attempts to document some of these options when launching these attacks. Uh, and hopefully that can help you with uh, some of the more obscure options that you might want to learn about. The only one that I'm gonna call out is this option up here to use asset note params. This is going to use parameters from uh, an asset note project, which is going to be a lot more comprehensive and therefore it's also gonna send many more requests and take a little bit longer to complete. I would recommend that if you're trying to be thorough uh, or potentially using your own curated list or a, a list from, from elsewhere that contains uh, you know, a very comprehensive set of parameters. Uh, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to run this in the default configuration because I don't want this to take forever to complete. So I'm gonna click OK. And you'll remember that I said this is going to prompt us a series of times. It's because when we clicked guess everything, it's gonna give us a different configuration for uh, the cookies and the HTTP headers and the URL parameters. And I'm just gonna let those all run um, as the default here. And there we go, uh, the attack is off. So what's happening? We don't see anything. Well, we can look at logger. And if I sort logger with the most recent requests up at the top, you can see that we are sending off all of these requests and you can see that the way that it works is it batches a large number of parameters at once, right? So it includes a large number of parameters and then the tool has logic so that such that if it sees a difference in a response that indicates one of the parameters that it sent might be being processed by the application, then it goes through a process to deduce which parameter actually caused that change in the application. Um, we can also see what it's doing by going over to our installed extensions tab here, clicking on Paraminer and going to the output, and you'll see that it is counting through the different attacks that it's running. Um, finally, if it actually finds anything, you'll wanna go to the target tab because it will pop up issues. Uh, here, I was looking at uh, the Juice Shop application. I was running it against my uh, local host hosted Juice Shop. And unfortunately, actually, it does not give us any parameters. Um, normally it would pop up if it found something saying uh, something like secret uh, parameter identified. Unfortunately, in this case, it found nothing. Uh, hopefully you have better luck in your actual engagements than I did on this demo where we get nothing. Um, but uh, I will caution you to uh, make sure once you get those findings to explore what the parameter is actually doing and what it's, um, you know, how it's being processed by an application 
what it actually means that the application is is processing it. You'll if you run this a lot, you'll encounter a lot of parameters that are um, that are used in very interesting ways uh, that you might not have expected to see on the application you're testing. So you want to be careful in exploring and, and understanding how it actually works uh, before you begin, uh, you know, sending payloads at it and, and seeing what you can actually exploit with it.